from Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Eric Allen alongside Eric Coleman. We will be joined later on in the show by Jets offensive lineman Jonathan Harrison. E, uh, the Jets after a bye, they come out. They play tough against the New England Patriots for a couple quarters. But when the plays had to be made in the second half, the Patriots took care of business and they take home a 27 to 13 victory. It is the Jets' fifth consecutive loss. Yeah, that, that hurts saying that, you know, five straight losses. Uh, you know, I thought the Jets played well in the first half. You know, they had a great game plan. Uh, they were competitive. They were taking it to the Patriots. Um, you know, and, and that's a great team. They play, just played against, you know, they played against one of the, the, probably the greatest quarterback of all time. And, and he made some plays down, down the, the stretch of the game that made the Jets pay. You know, but ultimately, it was a tough-fought game. I, I thought that, you know, the Jets played well. They executed well, especially in the first half. You know, they, they, they were... Handed, go, going back and forth yeah, with the they Patriots, were. and, and they they're responding. And they struck early in that game, and that's what you wanted to see. They had so many first-quarter struggles. They hadn't scored a first-quarter point since week seven against the Minnesota Vikings, and Josh McCown led them into the end zone early. They took that 7 nothing lead on a 16-yard scoring pass to Jermaine Curse. Yeah, it was great to see Jermaine Curse get into the end zone. You know, he, that was Josh McCown's favorite target last year. Yeah. And to see them connect again, you know, it really, uh, you know, got, got everyone excited. You know, the, that – it's a lot of hard work that goes into those plays. Uh, the offensive line did a great job of protecting uh, Josh McCown during the game, and, uh, and he was able to find those open receivers. Inside the Jets is supported by Selective Insurance. Response is everything. I'm looking at my play-by-play -play right now. Mm -hmm. The Jets tie the game on a 38-yard Jason Myers field goal in the third quarter to make it 13-13. Here's the response from the Patriots. Four plays, 75 yards, culminating on a touchdown from Tom Brady to Julian Edelman. That's what championship teams do. When they are pushed, they come right back and they took control. Yeah, you know, they did a great job of, of counterpunching. Uh, you know, you, everyone knows, you know, when you play the Patriots, the game plan is going to change uh, week to week. They're going to have some different wrinkles in their, in their offense, and they're going to move the ball. You just have to try to limit them uh, to field goals. Try to keep them out of the end zone. They are going to get chunk plays. They are going to move the ball on you. you know, listen, Tom Brady it isn't Tom Brady for no reason. You know, he does a, a great job of finding the open receiver, and it doesn't seem to matter who is playing receiver. He's going to find the open man. Okay, bottom line, though, what is happening? happening with the Jets rush defense that is the second consecutive opponent who has come into MetLife Stadium because we saw this from the Buffalo Bills in week 10 and the Patriots did just the same thing where they amassed more than 200 yards on the ground yeah you know and that, that's the the pride of your defense every week you go in wanting to stop the run you know, because if you, if you allow a team to run on you, then you open up the floodgates for everything, the play action passes, the deep shots, uh, and, and you really leave yourself vulnerable as a defense. You know, Todd Bowles said it after the game. Listen, there were some guys trying to make too many plays. They got a little undisciplined with their gap integrity, and that leads to big plays. You know, I, I know several plays. The first run by Sony Michelle, yeah. the 31-yard run, you know, Nathan Shepard, uh, the, the defensive end. Yeah, uh, Nathan Shepard. Shepard, right. He was, po he was, he was kind of turkey necking. He was supposed to be inside in his gap. Jamal Adams kind of went inside to cover for him. Right. And then both of them got washed. It was a huge cutback lane for Sony Michelle to run through, and, and that can't happen. You know, you, everyone has to do their job. You have to be able to trust the man next to you that he's going to be in his gap and, and that everything, you know, can be limited that way. Why are those communication issues happening at this point in the season? Avery Williamson talked to the media about that today. He said, sometimes – Maybe I got us in the wrong call, or maybe sometimes guys didn't hear me. But to your point, I think of what a lot is happening, a lot of what's transpiring out there on the football field is guys are so eager to make a play that mm -hmm. they are not following their own individual role and responsibility. Yeah, you know, when talking in regards to the communication, yeah. you know, that, that was my job in, in the secondary is to communicate to everybody. And when you're playing at home, it can get tough. You know, that crowd is so loud that I could be standing next to you right now and you can't hear what I'm saying. Sure. So you have to come up with hand signals. You have to be demonstrative in, in signaling, you know, the different changes in the coverages and, and what you're playing. Uh, and one thing about, you know, Avery, him saying he's making the wrong call. 
if you make the wrong call yep. and everyone's on the same page, you can be all wrong, right. but you'll be all right. You right. know, everyone's on the same page. You can get through the down. Right. But the problem comes when one guy's playing in one coverage, the other guy's playing a different coverage. That's when you start to see the blown coverages, the big plays, and, and that just can't happen. Are you surprised by it right now, this defense who was – relatively sound against the run early on in the season mm-hmm. is springing so many leaks because Tom Brady's going to get his yards in the air against whoever he plays, Eric. Yeah. You know, you know what? It, it, it's difficult, you know, especially against a team like the Patriots. You know, they have so many weapons throwing the football yep. that, you know, you may lo- look at the last four games they played and maybe they threw the ball a ton. You know, today, or this last game on Sunday, you know, especially in the second half, it seemed like they came out determined to run the football. It happened to us back in, I want to say it was 2007. Uh, the Patriots played the Minnesota Vikings the week before us. Okay. Tom Brady back then threw 50, 52 passes. Right. They were in spread formation every play. And that was unheard of back then, 52 passes. We prepared. We had dime packages. We brought up extra DBs. We activated guys. We had all kinds of packages ready. When we played them on Monday night, they ran the it down first, your throat. They ran it down our throat with three tight ends, two running backs for the first two series. And it's just they, they're just one of those offenses that changes every single week. So it makes it tough. Offensively, the Jets got it moving in terms of yards. Had about uh, just under 340 yards of total offense. Uh, Josh McCown threw that scoring pass to Jermaine Curse. I thought they were a little bit better on third down. He also completed balls to eight different targets. Mm-hmm. But the points aren't there. Yeah, you know, executing in the red zone, you know, getting those points on the board, getting touchdowns. You know, when you play against these high-powered offenses, and especially nowadays in the NFL, you need touchdowns when you get into the red zone. You, you, you can't settle for too many field goals. You know, you, you look around the league, and teams are putting up 40, 50 points. you, you got to find a way to get in there. Somebody has to make a play and break through for, for a touchdown. All right, so a few lineup changes uh, Sunday. Um, and, and our next guest, Jonathan Harrison, actually – he came in, started at center, and Spencer Long took the place of Big Carp, James Carpenter, out of the lineup with a shoulder injury. What did you think about how the line played overall up front? Because I know the media was focusing a lot today on the pass-to-run ratio. Mm-hmm. I think Josh McCown had 45 pass attempts, not many rush attempts for the Jets on Sunday. Yeah, you know, I thought the offensive line did a great job uh, of protecting McCown uh, when they did run the ball. Listen, I, you know, I saw a couple of plays where, where Spencer Long was playing guard. He pulled, yes. and he laid out a couple of guys, you know, and it was, it was great to see that chemistry, uh, you know, them stay bonded as the offensive line. Although there's a couple of shuffles in the, in the lineup, you know, you move a different position, they have that chemistry. They have that trust for one another. And it was seen yesterday, or excuse me, yeah, yesterday in the game that they had that chemistry. Uh, the player that, one of the young players that I'm most encouraged about is Chris Herndon. He leads all rookie tight ends in the National Football League in terms of receptions. And he is second in yards against the Patriots. He had seven receptions. He is going to be a core piece for this team in 2019 and beyond. Absolutely. You know, and Chris has done a great job of, of working on his weaknesses. You know, he, he, he's a speedy tight end. He can, he can win on those one-on-one matchups. And he's found a great rapport with the quarterbacks. Yeah. And that's so important to have a tight end who can, who can be, be your security blanket, who can stretch the field down the middle. It, it makes it tough on a safety. You know, because you're playing safety, you're playing cover two. You may be going deep and looking at that number one receiver, but you're thinking about that tight end running up the seam, and a guy like Chris Herndon can help you stretch the field and open things up for a quarterback. All right, in about the 45 seconds we have before we get to a commercial break, what do you think about, if you're a fan right now, are you chomping at the bit for the next time Sam Darnold returns to action? Now it's two consecutive games that he's missed with the strained foot. Josh McCown did some nice things out there. But the future of this team, this franchise, is number 14. Yeah, you know, you want to see your star player go out there and and work and and mature and get better week to week. You know, he's a rookie. He needs as many reps as possible. But at the same time, you can't risk a long-term injury uh, and just rush him back on the field. But that's who the fans come to see. They come to see Sam Darnold. They come to see his improvement week to week and see if he can continue to get better. We will have to monitor his progress throughout the week. Todd Bull said it's too early. We'll see where he's at. Uh, later on in the week but we'll come right back here on Inside the Jets with Jets offensive lineman Jonathan Harrison. 
Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium, teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. At EY, they harness their veterans' potential and perspective to ensure success in the marketplace. Using their talents and strengths, they not only enhance their business, but they continue their critical mission to build a better working world. Visit ey.com slash us slash veterans for more information. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean 0.2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey, Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with Easy Choice Checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement, leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one on my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash Jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Jet fans, take your Sunday to another level with the Premier Jets pregame party at Club Prime Sport. Enjoy food and drinks, games and giveaways, plus live entertainment. Elevate your game day at MetLife Stadium with a Jets experience like no other. Go to primesport.com or call 877-527-2603 today to secure your spot at the official Jets pregame hospitality at Club Prime Sport. With Prime Sport, it's more than a game, it's an experience. Primesport.com. Cyber attack, data breach, malware, botnets. Think your business is immune? It's not. Malware is alive and well on most corporate networks. So you need active malware detection. You need CDW. CDW has a complimentary service called Threat Check. It passively monitors your network to detect malicious traffic and other risks. CDW's security experts will then analyze and explain the results and provide security recommendations. Learn more at cdw.com slash threat check. CDW, people who get it. Bet online, just like in a casino anywhere in New Jersey with 888. Yes, casino games, live dealer, and more at 888.com. It's fun, fun, fun at 888. So bet, bet, bet now. 888 is a proud sponsor of the JETS 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 Jets. 888 encourages responsible gaming. Players must be 21 or older to play and in the state of New Jersey. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hi, football fans. This is Director Jared Maples with the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. It's our mission to protect New Jersey with our federal, state, and local partners. Of course, nobody knows our communities better than the people who live there. That's where you can help. If you see something that you suspect is out of the ordinary, report it. Together, we can keep our state safe. Remember, if you see something, say something. To learn more about what to look for, visit njhomelandsecurity.gov. Advance your career at Centenary University's School of Professional Studies. With accelerated scheduling and competitive pricing, it's convenient for busy adults to earn an MBA, undergraduate degree, or certificate. Centenary graduates work in hot fields like social media marketing, criminal justice, data analytics, health administration, and sports management. At Centenary University, they're committed to your success. Learn more at sps.centenaryuniversity.edu. Bunch set right, three receivers. Shotgun from McCown, quick snap, takes the snap, drops back. Under pressure, throws over the middle. He's got curse at the five. He cuts left, reaches the ball out at the goal line. That's a jet touchdown. Jermaine Curse dragging across the middle on third down, and McCown finds him. Welcome back to Inside the Jets. Our player guest segment is presented by M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Eric Allen here alongside... Eric Coleman, and now we welcome in Jets offense alignment, Jonathan Harrison. Thanks so much for joining the program. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Jonathan, so when did you know early, did, at what point in the week did you know, hey, Big Carp's going to be out? Because typically, Carpenter's a fixture in that lineup. He hadn't missed a game throughout his Jets tenure. It was like 58 consecutive starts, so then he had to do some shuffling, and that meant Spencer Long moves over to left guard, and you're inserted at the center position. Um, yeah, so uh, 
just during the week sometime, uh, you know, coaches mentioned that, you know, that might, that might be a possibility for the week. So, you know, they just uh, told me to prepare as if, you know, I, I'm going to start the game. And, you know, that's what, that's what I tried to do the best job I could. And, um, you know, I felt like we had a great chemistry out there on the line on Sunday. And, you know, despite the results of the game, you know, I think there was a growth in certain areas. Yeah. So. Now, now, can you talk about, you know, everyone talks about the center position, how there's a lot of communication. You're like the, the, the head of the offensive line. What goes on before a snap uh, at the center position? What do you have to identify? What communication do you have to make? Um, so, yeah, so we, we look at the defensive front. You know, we tell whether, you know, three down, four down uh, defense, uh, identify the middle linebacker who we're going to be working to, and then we make the calls across the line, you know, accordingly. And um, the calls get sent all the way out to the tight end, sometimes back to the running backs, depending on the play. How easy does Josh McCown make it for you? Here's a guy who is in his 16th NFL season now. He's 39 years old. I probably, I'm thinking that he hasn't seen too many defenses that are going to throw him off. Yeah, yeah. He has a, you could tell he has a lot of experience, a lot of confidence, very comfortable um, in the huddle. And, um, just uh, his comfort, not saying, you know, Sam didn't have any comfort or anything. Sam was right. very comfortable. But his comfort just, you know, it's um, just always a, a, a reassuring thing, you know, for a huddle. And, and just going out there, the swagger he plays with, uh, the competitor in him, it's really great to work with him. What did you really. think about that 10-yard run in the third quarter? It was it third and 10? You guys are trailing, I believe, 13 to 10 at the time. And McCown put his body on the line. He didn't have to do that. A lot of quarterbacks might get down and say, okay, I'll take the eight yards, put Jason Myers on the field, we'll take the three. But he extended, and he really took a shot. He did, he did. And we're like, man, there goes Josh again. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. He, he's such a competitor. He doesn't even think to slide. Like, once he's out there running in the field, he's no longer a quarterback. Like, he's a ball carrier at that point. So, so is it different, uh, you know, protecting different types of quarterbacks? I know you, you blocked for Andrew Luck in the past. Uh, Josh McCown, more of a pocket passer, but he can show his athleticism. Is it difficult playing, you know, blocking for different types of quarterbacks? Um, not too difficult. Not too difficult as long as, like, the, the chemistry is there. Okay. You know, as long as the chemistry, you know, you know what um, they're going to do. And as long as you're doing your job, you don't have to worry about what's going on back there okay. at the end of the day. And yeah. then speaking of that chemistry, Spencer Long was next to you yeah. during this game. What was that like? Were you guys communicating, you know, more than often, more than the regular? Were both of you playing the same position? Um, yeah, you know, just uh, basically having two centers out there on the offensive line, you know. So, um, you know, we, we, we understand everything that's going on, makes communication very, very easy. Um, we sit next to each other in the meeting room, mm -hmm. so we're always chit-chatting, going back and forth about what we're watching on film. So communicating with him was, was quite simple, you know. They, uh, we really didn't skip a beat. Okay. Jets Reward members, don't forget to enter the code POST in your Jets Rewards por portal during the show to earn 100 points. That is POST. You're listening to Inside the Jets. You might be watching Inside the Jets. Eric Allen and Eric Coleman joined now by Jonathan Harrison. What can you say about the athleticism of the A4, uh, or A4 mentioned Spencer Long? Because... He was talking about it in the opening segment, Jonathan. He really got out on one pole yesterday and destroyed somebody. Man, he was he was uh, licking his chops for that play. He was waiting <laughs> on that play to get called, yeah. and um, and I missed you know I missed what, what actually happened. I looked up on the jumbo and I'm like, dang, Spence, like come on, man, like he. Yeah, he really laid into that dude. Man, but that, that's what gets an offense going. You know, that's what brings the energy into the huddle. As a defensive back, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> 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 to see the big center run around. I think it was McCordy who he hit. And I don't know if, if he looked like he it was a, a blind deer in the headlights yeah. and just got <laughs> rolled over. That was, that's awesome. That has to motivate your O-line. Oh, definitely, definitely. Anytime a defensive back gets near the line of scrimmage, we're trying to, to take him out. Like, don't, don't come in here. Just stay out there. Don't, don't come in here. What about the challenge for an offensive line? Men, uh, an offensive lineman and an offensive line as a unit when you guys are retreating because when I say retreating, you're in pass pro a lot yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I think there was maybe 50 call pass plays and just 15 maybe runs. Yeah, you know, we, we did pass the ball a lot. And, um, you know, at times that can be difficult, you know, passing the ball. But at the end of the day, that's our job. You know, that's what we train to do. That's what we're supposed to do. And, 
you know, hats off to all offensive linemen for being phenomenal athletes. You know, the ability <laughs> to back up and stop a 300-pound man from running straight through, you know, is impressive at the end of the day. <laughs> yes, but, it is. Yeah, so. So, so when you get to the sideline, are you like, Coach, come on now. I want to tee off on this guy. <laughs> I, 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 need to, I need to get some get back yeah. for all these bull rushes that I'm getting. You know, we definitely, we definitely request it, and, um, you know, but we have to trust whatever the coach is calling, yeah. and, and, and we're willing to do whatever he asks. But, of course, it's always fun uh, teeing off on someone in, in the run game. Okay, yeah. we have to solve a riddle over at One Jets Drive. Henry Anderson used to be a teammate of yours in Indianapolis. Jonathan started his career with the Colts. The nickname of Goose came over from Indianapolis to the Jets, but nobody knows why Henry Anderson has that nickname. Can you tell us or no? You know, no. I, oh, oh, man, I, I don't know if I could do that to Henry. I don't know. You're going to have to ask Henry on that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, it's, 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 not, it's really not that bad, but you're going to have to ask Henry on that one. So that uh, secret is going to stay in Indiana, I guess. I guess so. All right. got to so. keep it close within the teammates. <laughs> <laughs> the brotherhood. Um, what's the system change been like for you this year as far as Rick Dennison up front being a run game coordinator and also your offensive line coach. Uh, can you talk about that zone blocking system? Um, you know, I, I love the zone. You know, I yeah. love the zone scheme, and he does a great job of coaching the zone scheme, making sure everyone understands, you know, the assignments of not only just us, you know, the, the tight ends, you know, the, the path of the back. Where this play is supposed to hit, and, and him, um, you know, him really emphasizing, you know, the, the learning of the, the run game and the zone game. I think it just helped build us as an offensive line. Just make, you know, being able to plug and play different players that much easier of a transition. And, and you are an athletic center. So do, do you think that plays into your talents very well? Yes, yes, it does. You know, I do enjoy, um, especially, you know, the outside zones and using speed instead of just power all the time. So, right. yeah, I like mixing it up. So, so what are some of the differences between man and zone blocking? Is it in zone, you're just getting a hat for a hat and, and you uh, just get a, the running back just runs to your butt? Is that kind of what the scheme is? Um, yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. You know, I uh, want to create some double teams when possible. want to create some double teams. But, you know, the idea is to get the defensive flowing to open up, you know, cutback lanes or whatever lanes for the running back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whichever, you know, misdirections or, you know, backside blocking by the tight ends, whatever it is, we're just trying to – to cut the defense and give the running back a lane to get through. Okay. So. If you're wondering why Jonathan Harrison is so well-spoken, well, he's a University of Florida alum just like myself. <laughs> go so Gators. Go Gators. I'm so happy that he's up here tonight. Jonathan, uh, you're a fascinating guy. You're very involved in the community with the Jets, the anti-bullying efforts. You're all over the place. You go to schools left and right. But first off, I want to ask you about your aspirations to be a homicide detective. What is that all about? Just something I kind of stumbled across. Um, well, I, yeah. You, you stumbled across it? Yeah, I kind of stumbled across it. You know, I started out a psych major in college, and um, I was having trouble passing an online course. So I switched up my major, and, uh, and my academic advisor told me, he's like, hey, you know, uh, criminology and anthropology, you can, you can get both of these majors with what you've already started with, with uh, psych. So I'm like, all right, let me go that route. And, you know, after a couple of homicide classes, uh, a couple of criminology classes, I realized I'm like, you know what, like, homicide detective work is really fascinating to me. It sounds kind of strange, but I'm a big puzzle guy. Yeah? So, like, solving things, like, I love, like, escape rooms and stuff like that. Like, solving things, like, really, I don't know, playing to my strength. So, right. so like, the courses I had when, you know, like, they're at a crime scene, they're investigating not just, like, what happened, but why it happened, how it happened, all of that really sparked my interest, so... Something I'd like to pursue after football. You, you will, though? Yes, yes. Now, let me ask you this. So you're into homicide. You're in, uh, as far as from a detective, uh, 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 de uh, the detective focus, do you watch certain shows that you might binge on and say, well, you put yourself in somebody's shoes? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I've, I've binged on a lot of you know, murder mystery shows, homicide shows, uh, like the Dexters. Yeah? And, uh, of course, like the TV shows, like the first 48, uh, the CSIs. Um, I'm trying to think. I like Mindhunter, like I just how to get away with murder and making a murder. Like whatever shows you can, you can think of. I've tried them. I've at least tried them. So, so, so you gonna have a certain outfit? You gonna wear the trench coat and, and the whole top hat thing? I'll have to kind of figure my swag out when I get okay, to that point. Okay. I'll figure it out. I'll figure uh, it out. We got about 30 seconds. What about? Uh, can you talk about what you're doing 
in the community with the Jets. I, I talked about the anti-bullying before and why that is near and dear to your heart and what has that experience been like for you? Um, yeah, so you know, this year I've been trying to get involved with Stomp Out Bullying more. And um, you know, when I was younger, I, I was bullied. You know, I was bullied here and there. Um, bullied um, in elementary school, middle school. You know, I was a lot bigger than my classmates. Yeah. I've been over uh, 200 pounds since fifth grade. So, um, you know, there was times I'd get picked on, you know, get called chubby, whatever. And so it really just hits home with me that I understand that, you know, there's a lot of bullying going on in schools today and society today, especially with the access to social media. Mm -hmm. This gives another platform to get bullied. And, you know, I just, um, I wish somebody would have reached out to me, you know, when I was going outside and, you know, talking to my parents. And I just feel like if I can, you know, talk to, you know, a kid, you know, once a week, whatever it may be, that, that may be going through a hard time, letting them know it's going to be okay and that they can't take what's going on personally. Like, that's just, for whatever reason, that person's picking on them. They have to learn, you know, to, to help that grow their strength, their inner strength, and get through that. And if I'm able to do that, touch one person a week or so, you know, then, then so be it. You know, it's a, How much do you enjoy that interaction? I do. I really do. I really do. You know, love seeing the smile on their face. You know, they feel special for once. Instead of feeling, you know, like a minuscule person in their school, like, they feel special. They feel important. And it gives them, like, this confidence to, to kind of, you know, stand up to these bullies and stand up to whoever's making them feel inferior. You going to be watching the Tennessee Titans Monday Night Football uh, tonight? Definitely, definitely. Rushing home to watch it after this. A advanced, advanced scouting report for Jonathan Harrison. Thanks so much for joining us no tonight. No problem. Thank uh, you. Uh, Eric Thank Coleman you. and I will be back on Inside the Jets. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean 0.2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey, Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with Easy Choice Checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement, leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one on my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash Jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Around my house, I'm called difficult. I know what I want, and I always want more. Take my insurance, for instance. I want more coverages, but there's no chance I'm paying more for it. My agent knows this, and that's why she recommended the Selective Edge. With the Selective Edge, I get higher coverage limits and even coverages I didn't know I need, and my agent knows what discounts I deserve. More coverage, more options, less money. That's not too difficult, is it? Find an agent near you by visiting Selective.com. Selective, response is everything. Bet online, just like in a casino anywhere in New Jersey with 888. Yes, casino games, live dealer, and more at 888.com. It's fun, fun, fun at 888. So bet, bet, bet now. 888 is a proud sponsor of the JETS 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 Jets. 888 encourages responsible gaming. Players must be 21 or older to play and in the state of New Jersey. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. What do you want most when you're playing video games? Something to fuel your game, right? How about a delicious fruity, chewy candy to help you focus on that touchdown? Well, Mike and Ike candy can do just that. Grab a box of Mike and Ike original fruits, bursting with the fruit, chewy taste of cherry, lemon, lime, strawberry, and orange flavors. Pick up a box today to give you the advantage you need to keep playing. And check out MikeandIke.com for their other great flavors. Hey, Jets fans, New Jersey Motor Vehicle Chief Administrator Sue Fulton here to welcome you back for a brand new season of action-packed NFL football and to warn you about the dangers of texting while driving. Sure, fines and penalties are steep, but did you know you're also 23 times more likely to get into an accident if you text and drive? Or that taking your eyes off the road for just five seconds at highway speeds is like traveling the length of a football field blindfolded? That's not a winning drive, Jets fans. Learn more at JustDrive.com. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium, teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. At EY, they harness their veterans' potential and perspective to ensure success in the marketplace. Using their talents and strengths, they not only enhance their business, but they continue their critical mission to build a better working world. 
Visit ey.com slash US slash veterans for more information. Every time you close your laptop, a corona gets its line. And every time your to-do list is to do one less thing, a corona gets its line. Every time you press pause, every time you unwind or lose track of time, a corona gets its line. And every time your feet are up while the sun goes down, a corona gets its line. So drop a lime in and find your beach. Please drink responsibly. Corona Extra Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. a jump ball and it's going to be intercepted terrible throw by josh mccown as he just threw one up for grabs and it is picked off by stefan gilmore at the patriot two yard line welcome back to inside the jets we are broadcasting live from vanderbilt sports in spirits inside the wyndham hamilton park hotel inside the jets is presented by ey building a better working world Eric Allen and Eric Coleman here. I'll tell you who's building a better working world. That's Jonathan Harrison. He's got a lot of things yeah, going is. on, man. I mean, that's, that's great to hear. You know, first of all, it's great to hear him being in the community, helping out kids, yeah. going through the same things that he went through in life. You know, when you're, when you're a big football player, people tend to listen to you. You know, and to be able to go help those kids, man, and, and be a, a shining light to their day, that, that's big time by him. Uh, growing up, E, I would have never thought of looking at a guy who's 200 pounds in fifth grade and think people were bullying him. Yeah. I always looked at the big guys and said, I'm staying away from them. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's the, the main people that they, they, they bully, you know, because yeah. they're insecure about themselves. So they try to pick on the big guy. Yeah. But I'm sure once he got in high school, all that changed once he started getting in the weight room and everything. But hey, it's really good to hear him. Uh, you know, step out of his comfort zone and go out in there and help those others. It is a monstrous problem today on social media, especially for young kids. So I love that he's going in and trying to make a difference. It has to resonate when they hear maybe from a professional athlete compared to a teacher because sometimes maybe you're not going to listen to a teacher growing up, but you look up to a professional athlete in a different kind of way, and maybe it will resonate with you. Yeah, that, that's why you got to give him a lot of credit. Spending his, his time his time off the field, spending time with those kids and making that impression. You know, you, you said it. You know, you may not listen to your coach, you know, mom, eat your vegetables, whatever, but if a big jet player comes through, oh, I'm going to eat my vegetables. Now, uh, criminology. I take a criminology uh, courses at the University of Florida, and then now – after his playing career is over, which he's doing a nice job right now as a versatile lineman for the Jets, he's potentially talking about being a homicide, a homicide detective. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. You know, and, and it's great to, to hear that he's working towards his post-football goals because, you know, that's, that's the big thing. So did you like the athleticism you saw from the offensive line yesterday against the Patriots because Jonathan up there playing center, mm -hmm. he's got very good feet. And then Spencer Long looked a lot more comfortable, I thought, at the guard position because he's been struggling at center because he's dealing with the finger injury. Yeah, you know, well, well first of all, you obviously want Big Carpenter in there. Yeah. You know, he's one, of the, he's one of the best guards in the game. But any time that you can lose a guy and be able to, to keep that same consistency w with Spencer Long, it, it's, it's a great sign. And, and how about a credit to Spencer's athleticism? Yep. You know, he, he was a guard at first when he was with the Redskins. Yeah. They moved him to center. Being able to be that, that versatile player, you know, the more you can do, you know, the more ways you can help that team. The Jets have not had a defensive takeaway in five games. Man, it's been a long time. And they were living off the takeaways early in the season. Yeah. You played safety in the National Football League. You made it easy. You made it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> Your rookie year, you started getting takeaways left and right as soon as you came out of Washington State. But on a serious note, what is going on? Why can't they get the ball away? Well, you know, it, uh, a couple of things play into that. You know, it's easier to get takeaways when you're putting points on the board, you know, because that team that you're playing has to throw the ball. They're in situations where they can't really manipulate the defense. But if you get down, you allow a team to run the football on you, now you start – you start playing reactive instead of, you know, being the enforcers on right. defense. Instead of jumping routes, you're reacting to routes. You know, if it's a play-action play, you have to honor that play-action because they've been running the ball so well. So I think stopping the run will be a great way to, to, to start back to that turnover battle. Uh, getting, getting pressure on the quarterback, but offensively, you got to put some points to the board. Playing with a lead really does help well, your, your defense. But what would you do if you're a coaching staff right now? When Avery Williamson, who we've had him on the show, very intelligent guy, mm -hmm. and he cares about it. And there's a lot of guys 
inside that locker room who care about it. They want to win. But right now it's not working in terms of what's happening, those mistakes, especially on the defensive side of the ball in terms of stopping the run and guys not being on the same page or maybe not staying, maintaining their gap integrity or just maybe one guy out of 11 is not doing the right thing. What are you doing inside the locker room right now if you're a player? Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, at this point in the season when, when you have – you know, single players not doing their job or trying to do too much. Yeah. I think you have to put it out on blast in front of the team. Okay. Show them, listen, we can't have you doing your own thing if we want to be successful as a team. Everyone has to know and do their job and execute it if you want, you know, if you want to win. You want to be successful. I'm counting on you to, to be right here. You're counting on me to do my job. I can't play well if you don't do your job. That's the that's the 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 message that has to be resonated to that defense in front of the whole team. Because maybe at that point, maybe you'll start thinking, you know, if the offensive guys are seeing me, uh, see, seeing it called out that I'm making mistakes, maybe that'll make me make me change my ways and, and play within that defense. Does there have to be peer pressure inside that room yeah, as well? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the leadership has to, you know, the, the leaders of the team, whether offense, defense, you have to emphasize everybody do your job. You know, you, you can't do too much. Don't try to do my job and your job. Do your job. That's the, that's the first way we're going to start making plays. If you, you know, once you carry out your assignment, let it loose. Go ahead and make a play. Go strip the ball. Go, you know, get after the quarterback. Do whatever it takes. But we cannot be – you not have integrity as a defense. We can't have success as a defense if one guy is doing whatever he wants. I know fans, a lot of fans, are looking forward to December 31st because that's the end of the season and you can turn the page. Mm -hmm. At 3-8 and eight on a five-game losing streak, tell fans right now what you as a player – has to play for over these final five games. Well, you know, during these, these last five games, you play for the man next to you. You know, you play for the, the name on the front of your jersey and the back. You have to play with pride. Go out there and, and, you know, it's an honor and a privilege to be a part of this NFL. Any opportunity you get to step on that field, you play like it's your last play. You know, and you have to think as a player, the whole league is watching. And the, the, the best time to evaluate a player is when things aren't going well. You know, you want to make sure that that player still works hard. He cares about his teammates. He's not selfish. He's going to bust his butt when things aren't going well. That's when you really need to dig deep, find that extra gear, and find that motivation for your brothers in that locker room. Yeah, and then, frankly, there are going to be some veterans who are not wearing green and white next year. And they have to put good things on film because they want to be employed by another team in 2019, correct? Yeah, you're playing for jobs right now. You know, when things aren't going well, you start seeing different people in, in your meeting rooms. You know, they start bringing guys out the street. They start activating players. You know, when, when the, the playoff picture looks bleak, yeah. they're going to start trying. You know, why not give a guy a shot sure. who's been busting his butt on practice squad, give him a chance to go out there and prove what he's got to show that he can maybe play in this league and make a career for himself. If you're taking it for granted as a player, shame on you. You're going to get up out of here. Uh, speaking of that, opportunities for guys. I thought Daryl Roberts played very well at cornerback early in the season. Yesterday, he was thrust into the starting lineup with Marcus May being out at the safety position. You played safety during your career. What did you think about how he played overall? Because, again, this is a guy who's probably not taking a lot of snaps even on the practice field at safety. I, I thought he did a great job. You know, playing corner, playing safety are, are two completely different positions. One, you're isolated on an island. You're on the track by yourself. The other one, you see the entire field. You have to look at certain keys. You have to be at certain landmarks. You can't let the quarterback manipulate you. And you played against the master manipulator in Tom Brady yesterday. I thought he did a solid job of keeping everything in front of him, breaking down on plays, and making good open field tackles. All right, one guy we know is going to be back here in 2019. You can put that in, in pen. He's going to be here in 2020. He's going to be here in 2021. Jamal Adams, what did you think about his performance against the Patriots? I think he takes a lot of pride in that matchup against Rob mm -hmm. Gronkowski because he talked a lot after the game, 33, Jamal Adams. He talked about respect because I think a lot of people held it over his head what happened the first time yeah. Rob Gronkowski came to MetLife Stadium. He had a pair of touchdowns, and Jamal was maybe a little bit late on a couple plays. Last year's final game of the season was at Gillette Stadium. Rob Gronkowski had zero catches. Yesterday, Gronkowski got into the end zone, but when Jamal Adams was matched up with him, he did a good job. 
and he had three pass defenses. He did a great job. You know, he, he limited Gronkowski to three catches. Yep. As you mentioned, that touchdown was in his own coverage. Jamal had nothing to do with that Avery, play. Avery Williamson said today in the conference mm -hmm. call that we were in cover two, the Jets were in cover two, and Gronk was my guy. Yeah, it, it was a tough coverage, though. It was a tough play. Right. Uh, Claiborne was, was down at the corner position. He had to rotate to the half. That just, that's just a tough call for that situation and a tough position to be in with a speedy re, uh, tight end like Rob Gronkowski. But going back to Jamal Adams, you have to take it personal. You know, you were brought here as one of those players that was, that was here to stop Gronkowski, sure. here to stop those tight ends that have been dominating the AFC. You have to take it personal when, when they, they, they put that challenge in front of you. And, and when you click on the tape, one thing you're going to see is Jamal Adams flying around, giving full effort, playing with his hair on fire. Yeah, he may make mistakes, yeah. but he's doing it going full speed. And if I'm a coach and I'm watching that, I'm okay with that. He is so excited to play the game of football. He loves it so much, Eric. Uh, and that hit on Julian Edelman. I'm sure Edelman's feeling that today as well. Oh, yeah, he's feeling that. And he also had a nice shot on Gronkowski. Right. And you, you love that. You know, as, as a fan, of, a former player, a fan of football, you can see, you can't hide it. You can't just fake being passionate about this game. It shows when you click on the tape and the way Jamal's playing. You know, listen, I, I, I'm pumped up about him because I'm a former safety. Uh, of course. But the way he flies around, the way the, the enthusiasm he plays with, with the game, it's infectious. The guy next to you, you know that if you're not as good as Jamal or maybe you are as good as Jamal, listen, I have to play up to that level. I can't let my teammate down, and that's kind of what Jamal brings to the Jets. I'll tell you what. If I wasn't a member of the Jets organization and I was just watching Jamal Adams on TV, I would, say, I would think some of that is manufactured. It is not. That is his personality. He is nonstop. He never stops talking. He never <laughs> stops moving. I mean, if it's a missed field goal, he's running 100 yards down the field. He, uh, he's on the bench. He's ready to go. He's talking to the other team. He's talking to his teammates. Man, he is a football player. Yeah, that's the kind of player is going to take to, to change the course of, of a season, take the, change the, the course of a program. You need to get a bunch of Jamal Adams on your team, get them all together working hard, pushing one another, demanding that the best out of one another. That's one thing that Jamal does. He demands the best out of his teammates. You need a bunch of guys like that holding each other accountable giving their best effort, doing their job, making plays, that's when you start to win, and that's when you start to make a big impact. Jamal Adams' message to the fan base after the Jets' latest loss was stick with us, and I would say the same thing because Eric Coleman and I will be back for a final segment here on Inside the Jets. Ernst & Young LLP is proud to be the exclusive professional business and accounting services sponsor of the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium, teaming with them as the official sponsor of the EY Coaches Club. At EY, they harness their veterans' potential and perspective to ensure success in the marketplace. Using their talents and strengths, they not only enhance their business, but they continue their critical mission to build a better working world. Visit ey.com slash us slash veterans for more information. As a young boy, Gavin loved playing football. He lived and breathed it, wanted to go pro. Why he'd spent hours upon hours just practicing his touchdown dances. And one day, while getting fitted for bifocals, he realized he was never much good at throwing, or running, or catching, or even kicking. Yeah, Gavin's chances of playing pro football were looking like fourth and long, very long. But he did hear how Geico could save him money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. Then he did kind of a touchdown dance. At least he was still good at that. Hi, football fans. This is Director Jared Maples with the New Jersey Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. It's our mission to protect New Jersey with our federal, state, and local partners. Of course, nobody knows our communities better than the people who live there. That's where you can help. If you see something that you suspect is out of the ordinary, report it. Together, we can keep our state safe. Remember, if you see something, say something. To learn more about what to look for, visit njhomelandsecurity.gov. We haven't seen a superstar like this in years. You're not kidding, Bob. The people need to know about this standout. Introducing this year's most sought-after rookie, the M&T Bank Jets debit card. New on the scene, this fantastic plastic stands 2.125 inches tall and weighs a lean 0.2 ounces. This small but mighty paying machine is sure to be charging through checkout lines all season long. Hey, Jets fans, get your hands on the exclusive Jets debit card with Easy Choice Checking. It's free from a monthly maintenance fee and free from a minimum balance requirement. 
leaving you free from worry. You know, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing this powerhouse everywhere soon. No doubt about it. I want one on my team. So show your love for the Jets and save on fees today. Rush to any M&T Bank branch or mtb.com slash jets today. M&T Bank, the official community bank of your New York Jets. Other transaction and service fees, including insufficient funds and overdraft fees, may apply to this account. Member FDIC. Successful organizations have experts. Marketing experts, finance experts, logistics experts, but few have cloud experts. Fortunately, CDW has cloud experts. Lots of them. CDW Cloud Consulting Services can help your company develop smart, strategic cloud solutions. They'll work within your budget and requirements to help your company get ahead of the competition and maximize your cloud investment. Visit cdw.com slash cloud to learn more about our cloud consulting services. CDW, people who get it. They couldn't play football without us. We built this stadium. You couldn't tailgate without us. We probably built the road that got you here. Most of all, we promote economic development. That means investments in infrastructure and construction to provide opportunities for developers, union contractors, and members of Operating Engineers Local 825. We're ELEC, the Engineers Labor Employer Cooperative. We build the infrastructure New Jersey and the Jets rely on. Advance your career at Centenary University's School of Professional Studies. With accelerated scheduling and competitive pricing, it's convenient for busy adults to earn an MBA, undergraduate degree, or certificate. Centenary graduates work in hot fields like social media marketing, criminal justice, data analytics, health administration, and sports management. At Centenary University, they're committed to your success. Learn more at sps.centenaryuniversity.edu. Brady with White to his right, directing traffic, takes the snap, drops back, floats one over the middle, looking for Gronkowski at the goal line. He makes the catch into the end zone. It's a Patriot touchdown. So the Jets take the penalty instead of declining, and it burns them as Gronk scores on a floating pass right over the middle from Tom Brady. Welcome back to Inside the Jets. We are broadcasting live from Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton Park Hotel. Remember, Jets fans, you can stream Inside the Jets live through the Jets app presented by M&T Bank. Go to the App Store or Google Play now and search official New York Jets. Eric Allen and Eric Coleman here. We just heard Bob Wachusen's call of the Patriots' first touchdown, mm -hmm. which was a third and 12, a conversion to Rob Gronkowski. We talked about it a little bit before. Avery Williamson took responsibility, said, Gronk was my guy, cover two. With that being said, I want to ask you about the decision because a lot of fans came after me on social media yesterday. I thought it was the right call. Third and two, offensive pass interference, Todd Bowles has a decision to make there. Mm -hmm. Either you go fourth and two and the Patriots come out, do they kick a field goal? Belichick says today they would have. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, you don't know that. And the Patriots' percentages over the last 18 years since Tom Brady's been playing quarterback, fourth and two or less, I bet you they're pretty good. I'm moving them back because what have I done well defensively throughout this season? Stat-wise, not a ton of things. Excellent. But third down defense, number two in the National Football League. I understood the decision. Where Absolutely. were you? Absolutely. I understood this, the decision as well. I mean, you're fourth and two in the red zone. You know, do you push them back? You don't, you're not expecting your defense to give up a touchdown. If anything, if you're going to give them flack, do it for the play call on defense. Don't give, them, don't give them flack for declining the penalty and having them be in third or taking the penalty right. and being in third and 12. Um, you know, I thought the decision was, was the correct one to make. And, you know, it's easy to sit back and talk about a decision after it happened, after a touchdown was given right. up. If it's fourth and two and they run it in for a touchdown, everybody's complaining about him not taking the penalty. So it, it's a tough position to be in as a quarterback. I, I think people are being a little too critical on that call. I think they're just looking for something. But, again, if you believe that, you got to shout it from the high heavens as soon as it's happening. Mm -hmm. I sat there in the press box, E, before Gronkowski was in the end zone, before the snap at third and 12, and I said, you got to move them back here because they're going to go for it at fourth and two. And, oh, by the way, fourth and two at the 24-yard line, 
is a 42-yard field goal attempt if you go for a field goal. If you don't go for a field goal and you stop on third down, it's a 52-yard field goal attempt. Yeah, you know, and that was Todd Bowles trusting his defense, trusting that they were going to do enough to get them off the field on third down. Uh, listen, as an offensive coordinator, there aren't too many calls that you have in your playbook that are third and 12 conversions. It's a tough down and distance. Statistically wise, you look at the, the third down and, and eight plus, it's yeah. a very low percentage of conversions. Even for the Patriots, because if you, talk to, the Patriots. if you talk to people in New England this year, what has Brady struggled with? He struggled with pressure, the blitz, and... The Jets brought the pressure, just got there a little bit late. But don't call us homers either because we're sitting here on the inside no. the Jets because you just said it. You don't have a problem with them accepting the penalty. No, not a problem you, at all. You have a problem with the play call. Yeah, I have, <laughs> and I have a problem with the, with the result. You know, you're giving up a touchdown. What would you at the what, end of the day, you, what, know, you can't determine that as a coach. What would you have liked to see in there in terms of play call? Uh, play call high red zone. You know, I, I'm a big – Man-to-man -man coverage in the high you red are. zone. You know, play man with the free safety down the middle. Uh, yeah. That's my thing. But, you know, as you get closer, you have to go into zones. You have to go into red two coverage where you have seven across. But, you know, to be in that position, everything can be th – all your deep shots can be thrown on a rope. So to be in a cover two zone, that's a tough position to put your defense in. Okay, so what do you think about the schedule coming up? The Jets play the Tennessee Titans Sunday in Nashville. We know they've struggled – on the road over the course of the last two seasons. Tennessee, this is going to be a tricky little spot for them. Yes, the Jets are struggling mightily. We know that. Mm -hmm. But Tennessee, in a few moments, kicks off against the Houston Texans in a game they need in the AFC South if they want to have any chance of winning the AFC South. That's going to be a competitive, nasty ball game down in Texas. Then a short week to prepare for the Jets. A team, frankly, they might be overlooking. Yeah, you know, this is a great game for the Jets to watch. It's a division game. All the games matter. You know, every week is the most important game. But when you play within the division against your foes, you're going to give it your best shot. You're going to leave no, call, no stone unturned. So the Jets are going to see the real Tennessee Titans right now. And it's going to give them an opportunity to, to prepare for them. You know, see the personnel. See what they like to do in third, third and short when it really counts. You know, that's the things that I'm looking for as a player right now. Uh, this is a very big game. So if you were a player right now, mm -hmm. You would literally go home and sit in front of the TV and watch this game? Yeah, I would, I would casually watch this game would. and pay attention, you know, to some of the key players just for a personnel, just for a per personnel standpoint. Uh, you know, they, they are not in your division. You don't typically play the Tennessee Titans. So personnel is something that you may not be aware of. You're going to learn a lot about the players. You're going to learn a lot of insight about the tendencies, what they like to do, what they excel at. That's what I'm listening for. Tomorrow, I go watch the All-22, the big, you know, the, the, the front and the side and the backfield. Yeah. And, and that's when you start getting into your film study, uh, knowing the, the key components to the team and, and trying to find your advantage. Surprise at all that Tennessee has been inconsistent here in 2018. A new coach, Mike Vrabel, mm -hmm. a guy who actually used to be an assistant in Houston, and they've scored a lot of impressive victories, but they haven't been able to string together a lot of performances where you're like, okay, this team has turned a corner. Just most recently, they pounded the Patriots at home. Mm -hmm. Pounded them. Got after Tom Brady, ran the rock, and won a big game. The following week, they went to Indianapolis, and they had it handed to them. Yeah. You know, it's a young team. You know, yeah. and sometimes you see that young coach, young team. You might see some inconsistencies. You know, but, but I know one thing. I know today, you know, Vrabel used to coach for the Texans. Division game. Yep. You're going to see Tennessee's best shot today. Okay. You're going to see Marcus Mariota at his best. You're going to see uh, Travis Henry at his best. It's going to be a good game, and I think it's a great one to watch if you're the Jets. Okay. Uh, you, you're, you got Buffalo Bills flash flashbacks. I think you said Travis Henry. Derek Henry. Derek Henry, my bad. <laughs> and they also have Deion Lewis there. And Deion Lewis has become the number one back. But the Titans have said we have to get Henry the ball more. Can the Jets' defense take anything out of playing – Mitch Trubisky a couple weeks ago in terms of those RPOs because on Sunday in Nashville, you're facing a guy in Marcus Mariota who's still probably not all there as a passer, but he mm -hmm. can beat you with his feet. Yeah, this, this is a game where uh, all week it's got to be emphasized everybody has to be disciplined, looking at your keys, 
carrying out your assignment because if one player gets that itch and pokes his head inside and lets Mariota break contain, it's going to make the team pay. So everyone has to be focused on the details this week, on, on the defensive side of the ball. Carry out your assignment. That has to be the emphasis for the rest of the year. No one do your job, and, and that really gives us a chance to win. All right, we got about 45 seconds less, left or so. Offensively, you want to see more commitment to the run from this team, especially as they go to Tennessee. A Titans team who has excelled defensively, they're not giving up a lot of points, E. That's okay. You know, I, I have confidence in the offensive line. I mean, you, you go back and look at what they did to Denver. Uh, this team can run the football when they commit to running the ball. Okay. And, and I think that's the key to the success of the offense, you know, running the football, making things easier for your quarterback. And that's going to enable them to put some points on the board because they're going to need to do that if they want to win some games. Okay, thank you to Jonathan Harrison for stopping by. Of course, Justin as well. And Michelle back in the studio. Bree and Frank the Tank are here every week. And thanks to everybody who came out to Vanderbilt Sports and Spirits inside the Wyndham Hamilton, Hamilton Park Hotel. We will be back next week for Inside the Jets. Every time you close your laptop, a corona gets its line. And every time your to-do list is to do one less thing, a corona gets its line. Every time you press pause, every time you unwind or lose track of time, a corona gets its line.